So between the age of seven and 18, I probably went to church four or five times a week. I know it sounds excessive, but it was compulsory and it's a bit like PE or history. And I may have been told the gospel, but I certainly didn't understand it. Then in my 20s and 30s, I went to church twice a year at Easter and at Christmas. I wasn't an atheist, and I couldn't conceive that the world was created randomly. It's too beautiful for that. And I studied biochemistry at university, and it was too complex for that. So I believed there was a creator, and I occasionally asked that God for help if I was in trouble. But it was more like someone in my back pocket, um, someone I'd pull out when I felt like it, a sort of genie come vending machine. It's like a bespoke God that fitted into my lifestyle. But looking back, I had no idea of a consistent single God of the Bible or who Jesus was. So when I was younger, I thought of myself as a Christian in the sense that I believed in a God. I'd been confirmed. I ticked the Christian box on forms. I went to church with my family. But by my mid-teens, I'd stopped going to church. I discovered boys, smoking, drinking. Uh, life was fun, and I lived for parties and socializing. And by my 20s, I was living in Paris, and I fell in with a group of expats who I socialized with. It was the late 80s, and they had too much money too much spare time and uh, was serious about partying. But it was there that I met Jonathan. And after a while, we moved back to London and we were living in Wimbledon. We got married and had two children. So as Julia said, we came back to London and I continued to work hard, play hard, quite a hedonistic lifestyle. After a few years, when our daughter started nursery at Dundonald School, Julia and I became good friends with another couple whose daughter was in the same class. And the husband happened to be pastor of a local church. I remember him continually questioning me about my faith. And after resisting for two to three years, I eventually agreed to go to a course exploring the Christian faith, mainly to stop him asking me about it, and also to play devil's advocate. I wasn't convinced after going on the course but I continued to ask questions. And over time, I started attending church. And I remember one of the first talks I heard was from the book of Ephesians about predestination. I remember being absolutely shocked, uh, in fact, horrified by the notion that people are chosen by God to be part of his family. But it had a huge effect on me, and it provoked a real interest to understand what the Bible was all about. So the more I read and the more I asked people about it, the more I gradually saw that the world didn't revolve around me, but that our creator was at the center of everything and that I'd rejected him. It wasn't a eureka moment, but as I learned more about Jesus, the more I understood about my need for him to restore me back to a relationship with the God who made me. I think I was about 40 when I turned to Jesus as my savior and Lord. I started going to church partly because of my friend who had been invited me and partly because of Jonathan who was spending more time doing church things and getting more interested and I could see him changing and I didn't necessarily like it although obviously it's a better thing. Uh, I felt like it wasn't something I'd signed up to when we got married so I'd go along to church I'd listen to the sermons but I wouldn't hang around afterwards for the polite chit chats and coffee. So at this point, I thought most Christians were weird, slightly deluded people who were far too smiley and quite often could be objectionable. But that gradually changed. I began to realize that most Christians weren't at all like that. They were okay. And in time, through hearing the Bible explained, I came to a gradual realization of God's amazing grace and mercy. I can't pinpoint a time an exact time I became a Christian. It's been a journey, one I'm still walking, and I'm constantly learning new truths about Jesus, which are surprising and wonderful and often mind-blowing. Years after becoming a Christian, I began to realize just how much praying had gone on for Jonathan and I, when I'm sure we must have felt like lost causes. It took a, a long time and a lot of people were praying. Also, I'm adopted, and back around 2010, I met with my birth mother. I found out then that she's a Christian, 
and she had been praying for me nearly every day. It hasn't all been plain sailing since becoming a follower of Jesus, but he has held on to me. And that realization that he wraps his arms under me and holds on fast when I could fall away and throws his arms wide open when I turn back gives you such a sense of grounding and peace when life gets hard. So if I compare myself to about 20 years ago, the question would be, where was Jesus on my priority list? And to be honest, I'm not sure if he would have been there at all. But knowing that Jesus, who lived a perfect life and loves me so much, was willing to die for my rejection of God so that I can have eternal life, this makes all the difference to me now. So if I look at how I spend my time and resources, it's completely different. Knowing this truth about Jesus compels me to want to live in a way that makes him shine.